Hi everybody, uh, back again for the next season of From the Rocks of Cloud Season 2. Um, and uh, as you know, um, in these series we talk about, well, all, all things server, all things on-prem, all things cloud and hybrid. Um, you know, what does that mean? Like what, well, you know, what, and you know, there's lots of buzzwords, lots of technology gets, you know, things get confusing. So we just try and have a real conversation with an expert um i take the role of the uh, the real person who doesn't understand the technology and then we and then we wheel in a, an expert um and so the whole point of what we try and do is trying to simplify um this technology so that it makes sense so that a you understand it b you go talk about it go and find out more um and 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 c so you know you can go sell it um, and make some money from it, hopefully, um, or in fact, get the benefit of it from your business if you're you're an end customer. So yeah, so look, um, you know, lovely to have questions. If you've got any questions, let us know. Um, we're gonna be posting this far and wide this season. It's gonna be going on channel nine, um, at, well, fingers crossed, um, all over the place. Um, so um, hopefully we get lots of questions, lots of interest and anything you wanna know, Anything you're like, you know what? I'll just ask those, you know, rock to the cloud guys the question. Please talk to us. Uh, we're more than we to talk to you. So today, what are we going to talk about? As always, um, server. But a few things have happened in server. Um, we've just launched a new server. Come on, round, Thomas, round of applause. Round of applause. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Everyone in everyone in the crowd watching is going absolutely wild with uh, server uh, 2022. But Server 2022 is 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 really it's the tip of the iceberg. It's it's I think it's our first proper cloud ready server OS. So that kind of brings together hybrid cloud, and we're going to be talking about Windows Server 2022 hybrid cloud and Azure Arc. Which um, Azure Arc every time I every time I start finding out about this, it just blows my mind. So hopefully the next 30 minutes, we'll now be catching up with our special guest, uh, Thomas Moira, so um, is, is gonna blow your minds. Um, so today you've got Tom Tom, and uh, we're gonna try and navigate you through uh, Azure Arc uh, in the next 30 minutes. So absolutely, um, we'll also have those fun elements as always, um, which um, I think we tend to have a few memes, and we'll, we'll just see again if I look stupid, which uh, is what tends to happen here. So, uh, Thomas, over to you again. I know we, we introduced you many times, but um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, for, first of all, thank you for having me today. I mean, it's we have really some really cool, exciting stuff uh, I, I want to talk about today. Um, yeah, so my name is Thomas Maurer. I work as a cloud advocate uh, in the Azure engineering team. And what our role is, is basically to create different kinds of content, um, get feedback from our customers about what is not working, what is working, what can we improve and make better, and bring that back to the different uh, engineering teams. So I'm obviously not just presenting today. I'm also happy about the comments you have for us and the things which you would like to us to improve. Um, and so, yeah, I'm focusing obviously a lot on the hybrid technologies because I think this is where a lot of our customers uh, are and will be even in the future um, where they end up in a hybrid state or they run some stuff in the cloud, but also a lot of stuff on prem, uh, maybe even different cloud vendors as well. And uh, yeah, with Windows Server 2022, we got some awesome stuff going. Cool. Um, no, look, I, I love talking to you because I learn something every single time. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to that today, no pressure. Um, but one of the things that we talked about, like pre-talk talk, was um, you, you've got some demos. So um, today's today's got some exciting demos. So fingers crossed they all work as well. So there's absolutely no pressure on you at all, Thomas. Um, and uh, thanks for telling us about what you actually do at Microsoft because, um, you know, like, again, most people don't know what any of that means. So that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> so let's jump into today's topic. Um, let's talk about Windows Server 2022, um, the hybrid cloud uh, with Azure Arc. Um, so uh, let's 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 not waste any more time. Yep. So right, let, let's contextualize this. Right. So a server is something, and this is the way it's always been. A server is something that you have in a room, or it's in a you know an on-prem data center. That's just how it works. But how does it now work with the cloud? How does it now need to work with the cloud? So you bring up a great point, right? Windows Server has always been a great application platform. 
or even like building your hyper-converged infrastructure or building your infrastructure in terms of like Active Directory servers, Exchange servers, and so on. So that is like, was always and is always been like one of the scenarios for Windows Server. Um, but with the cloud in Azure, um, we also offer to run Windows Server in the cloud. And actually we offer a ton of different things to make uh, Azure really the best platform to run Windows Server in the cloud uh, with many of our different management features, uh, as well as some special offerings we have there um, as well. Now, what we learned from that is that like our customer says, well, well, this stuff is really great. The stuff we do in the cloud is really great. Let's, why not just like, can we use the same stuff to make our on-premises environment better? Meaning taking these management services, which run in Azure, and then bring that and connecting like service, which run on-prem, but I can still use the same tooling and management experience and get all these benefits. Mm -hmm. So. Really this time it's really about like running Windows Server on-prem, running it in Azure, but then combining it in a hybrid world. Okay, so it, it creates that um, ubiquitous compute computing, I've, I've learned that word, but it creates that ubiquitous computing environment where you know you don't have to worry about which bits are where, you can, you can manage it all together and you can manage it in the same way. Right, got it. So that's pretty straightforward. So that leads to this a hybrid state and you know, another thing that people say all the time, multi-cloud, right? I've got a, a multi-cloud environment. I've got a public cloud. I've got a private cloud. I've got clouds with different cloud providers. Um, you know, like, so, so what? Yep. So that that is exactly what I'm thinking what's, what, what's happening, right? And as, as I talked, like, this is like, I believe that a lot of our customers will end up in a hybrid environment, right? And the hybrid is not going to just be an in-between state until they moved everything to the cloud. For many of our customers, there are multiple reasons why they want to run um, their infrastructure or their application still also on-prem, like combining best of both worlds. These can be uh, data sovereignty reasons, regulatory mm -hmm. reasons, networking reasons, right? We have, um, I worked with a company who has like different factories all around the globe. And in some places they do not really have a reliable network connection. So they cannot um, have uh, the whole factory standing still because their internet is not going to running, right? So they need to have something there um, to make sure that everything runs. And, and there are many, many of these examples. And we hear that from customers as well, that they um, will end up in that scenario and actually end up in saying, hey, um, we see the on-prem value, um, we see the cloud value, um, but let us make it, help us making it better to combine these two in terms of like making it easy to extend to the cloud, making it easy to take advantage of the stuff we have in Azure and bring that back to the on-prem environment. Um, and, and again, many other, other wishes as well. And that is what we're trying to address. Uh, okay, right. So that makes, that, I'm getting that now and that makes sense. So server 2022, um, obviously, it's a whole year ahead of t right now. So that's something really futuristic. Um, but what does it offer when it comes to hybrid? So first of all, let me, let me say like, obviously hybrid is one of the big investment areas we have in Windows Server 2022. Uh, we really do a lot of stuff and that's what we're going to talk about in this session. But for everyone who is watching, there's obviously a ton of more stuff, especially when you think about, um, uh, security or like uh, application platform and many, many other improvements. And um, some of them, we don't, we don't even do a good job in all announcing all of these. Um, so for example, like Hyper-V nested virtualization for AMD CPUs now and, <laughs> and a lot of stuff, which is really great, which we have in there. Now, when it comes to hybrid, there's a lot of stuff there, but I want to talk today about three, three different things. First of all, I want to talk about how we bring actually Windows Admin Center uh, to the Azure portal. Because as you know, Windows Admin Center is our tool to manage uh, Windows Server, which is a, like you can download it, you can have then a web-based experience to like manage all your servers um, from that. Um, but if you run stuff in the cloud, you probably don't even want to run a Windows Admin Center server, right? You probably want to take just advantage of the Azure portal. So that is one thing we're going to look at. The other thing we're going to talk about is Azure Arc, obviously. One has one of my favorite um, tools to actually connect servers which are outside of Azure. And I'm on, on purpose say outside of Azure because uh, they could run on-premises, 
but they could also run even at other cloud providers, right? So yeah. we want to bring that management experience to all the servers wherever they are running, like on any, basically on any, any place uh, wherever your server is running. And last but not least, I will show you a ton of these um, uh, management uh, services. And obviously, I, I make it look easy to set these up, but I have to tell you, it's sometimes. Some, of course, you make it easy. Of course, you make it easy. That's like that. That's the. That's why we invited you. Um, if you didn't make it easy, you wouldn't be on the show. So, of See, course you make it easy. so, so I'm being completely honest here. Sometimes, I mean, if you do that in a production environment, there's a lot of things you need to onboard. And to be honest, it's always has been that way, right? That way, right? You have to think about backup you have to think about monitoring you have to think about change tracking security and all that stuff and it doesn't really just necessarily mean it's because of windows server it is basically with all operating systems or all the apps you're running you need to think about this so i want to show a way how you can use a service in azure to make that way easier um, than it was before okay yeah i mean look absolutely hopefully it's all about making things easier. That's what I've picked up, right? It's, you know, if a from a security perspective, you're going to get the latest and greatest security. Right, get that. But actually, how do we make these complicated scenarios and you know, all that that you talk about, how do we make that easy and manageable? So that, yeah. that makes sense, right? Okay, so you said that we can have Windows Admin Center directly integrated into the Azure portal. That's correct. That is I'm correct. guessing you, I'm guessing you can show me that. Of course, as as always I am prepared, <laughs> right? <laughs> the magic uh, the magic <laughs> of a live demo. Here we go. So, this is actually and again, I hope everyone knows this. This is the Azure portal, right? And what you can see here, I, I went to the virtual machine page here. I you can see I run a couple of virtual machines uh, here, uh, mostly Windows Server, but you can also see that we obviously run Linux as well. And if you click on one of these virtual machines in Azure, for those who probably haven't really worked with virtual machines in Azure, um, you can see here that I get like features to, for example, like connect to the machines, restart, stop, and so on. I get additional information. And you can see here on the left side where I'm scrolling, you can see here a ton of additional management services. And, and we're going to speak about these uh, in, in just a bit, how you can leverage them as well. But what I really want to show you is here this new one, which says Windows Admin Center. So we offer you all these great tools, right, uh, in Azure to manage like your servers at scale. But in some cases, you really need to go in and maybe troubleshoot even deeper into that server. Uh, you need to probably go and have a look at performance monitor or stuff like that, right? So usually you would just go in and you would probably RTP into that machine and then or in a jump post and then open up your management tools or open up your Windows Admin Center you installed there. But why not just like have that in these, the portal experience? So if I click on Windows Admin Center here, you will see that um, I already prepared this server to be, be able to connect. Um, since this server does not have a public IP address, I can even connect using a private IP address. So when I click on connect, I just need to provide the username and password of that um, server. And if I typed everything correctly, you can now see here that Windows Admin Center is loading. And what you can see here doesn't really look different from Windows Admin Center you can install on-prem, but you can see here on the top, it's actually really running in the Azure portal, right? So that that is something I wanna show you. And then you can obviously get like some overview stuff here you can see here that like I get the graphs usually, which I have to look at the different types of things which are happening in terms of network bandwidth and so on. Uh, and, and many, many cool stuff here. Yeah, it's very cool. So what we also obviously want to show you, it's it's nice to look at graphs, right? Especially like in a demo, it always like impresses managers and people. <laughs> um, but and, and and host of the show, very, very important. Um, but what I find very cool is here, we have like tools integrated. So if you now need to manage certificates or you want to see what certificates you have, you have now a web-based certificate manager in Windows Admin Center. And now with the integration into the Azure portal, you don't even need to go. So you can just go and browse through that, um, that experience. Same thing for, let's say, device manager, um, where you can just go and, and see what devices do you have here. Uh, so I have like, 
for example, if you want to look at disk drives and so on, you have that as well. Um, and a ton of other stuff like event management, users, and all the probably the stuff you need. Even a web-based registry editor, right? Which is sometimes can be handy. So if you quickly need to go and change a registry key, you can do that as well. But what I want to show you here is now, especially in the troubleshooting scenarios. So if I now need to go out and say, hey, I, I, I need to look at some performance monitors. Um, I can do that here as well. So I can create a new um, workspace here. I can go and add some of my performance counters here. So in that case, let's do uh, assessor count. That's always generates nice graphs. So let's select all. And then let's say, what do I need here? Uh, let's do this. Or, sorry, oops, that's not what I wanted. Actually, CPU time. And then I can here have different graphs. I can also say I want a line graph uh, as well. I can then join like min max or even do a heat map and all that sort of stuff. Whatever I like to do um, for this specific uh, tool set and, and for that specific report, right? So that, that is something I can now directly do from the Azure portal. Uh, I always can also, as I can do with, um, with Windows Admin Center, I can also do like PowerShell remoting session directly within that. So I have an interactive PowerShell session. Uh, I'm not gonna wait for everything to load. I don't wanna show you everything, but you get the idea that I can now manage my Azure virtual machine using Windows Admin Center directly from the Azure portal. So basically everything you can do on-prem with Windows Admin Center, you can do on Azure. So, within, for, like, within for, so, so, so almost, almost everything, right? There are some like yeah. stuff uh, where we don't have integration yet for these different tools, but for the necessary tools, for the basic tools, we absolutely have that. Yeah, correct. Right. So. Okay. So, with Windows Admin Center, managing like a hybrid cloud, multi cloud environment, it, be it becomes more and more important. So how, how can Azure help with that then, right? Yeah. So, I mean, what I've seen now, this is now cool. I can use Windows Admin Center to really drill down into Windows Server to manage that, to do all that. Now, you don't want to probably do that every single day, right? Especially if you have like hundreds or thousands of servers. If you do want to do that at a certain scale, um, you probably want to like automate processes. You want to take advantage of the management tools and not always go and actually dive into this. So in Azure, as I just showed you before, we have um, a ton of different uh, management tools to actually do that. Like I showed you the list on the left side with the different uh, things like monitoring, update management, yeah. and so on. Now, the challenge is that our customers are not just running in Azure. They are obviously running uh, Windows Server anywhere. Could be on-premises, could be somewhere in a branch office, retail stores, factories, or even other cloud providers. So what we really wanted to provide is like we take oh, the wait, Azure. Look, look, I just want to just be careful there, right? So that we don't recommend you use other cloud providers. I mean, obviously you can, you feel free to, but we don't recommend that. Just yeah, Absolutely. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, as I mentioned before, there's absolutely a, uh, the, like Azure is definitely the best place to run uh, Windows Server, but there are reasons why in some cases customers are spinning up Windows Server and other cloud providers as well. Um, yeah. And so, we want to give them a experience so that they can leverage Azure as a control plane and use those management services. Doesn't matter where the service is. So okay. let me quickly show you that maybe in the Azure. Yeah, portal. go on, show us. Go for it. Do it. So when I go here, for example, to all resources, what you can see here, everything in Azure is an object, right? So you can see here, I have like virtual uh, networks, virtual machines, I have IP addresses, I have databases, disks, even IP addresses, even public IP addresses can be an object, right? And everything is usually joined to a resource group and it's like based on a, in a subscription and you can use cool things like tagging here, for example, to like for you marking your cost center or your department this, this application is running on. Now, customers told us this is great to manage stuff at scale. So why not just use this, um, this, this, this resource, Azure Resource Manager to manage like all the resources, doesn't matter what they are. And to show you that, I already connected here a couple of service uh, using 
Azure Arc. So Azure Arc is really the bridge between the systems, the servers, which are running outside of Azure and uh, Azure itself. So I have already, as you can see, I connected a couple of those uh, beforehand. And then I obviously want to see all my servers. So I also have servers in Azure. So in this case, I scroll down and if I scroll long enough, you can see here, okay, I want to see my virtual machines, apply that filter. And now what you can see here is I can now see in one view, all my servers. So you can see here my Azure virtual machines, but also my servers here like app uh, 01 and 02, which are servers which are running um, here in my little data center underneath my desk, right? Mm. So this is like a, a great thing. And then you can, as you can see here, you can use things like tagging uh, to create different filters. So if I want to see all my um, servers from a specific cost center, I can also apply that and it shows me um, like only servers from these three different cost centers and get that single view. Now you might say, well, Thomas, this is great, but okay, I, I mean, I get that you want to show us some visibility, but I, I need to do more. And one thing I really like uh, is when it comes to like getting a compliance overview, because then I can always see how bad <laughs> oh, I'm doing. Man, your Christmas at your house must be like, seriously, <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? One, <laughs> well, let, let's just do a little, uh, little compliance overview, Christmas morning. Yeah, Love that's, it. that's, <laughs> I, I always ask for reports, right? From all my guests about their compliance situation. So <laughs> here I'm in Azure policy and you can see here that like, for those who don't know what I can do with Azure policy is I can configure my Azure environment the way I can limit, for example, what people can do. So I can say, Hey, you can only deploy in certain Azure regions. I can only deploy a certain size of Azure virtual machines or Azure services, uh, and so on. Um, however, what a lot of people don't know, there is something called Azure policy guest configuration. This allows us to audit operating systems of Azure virtual machines and with Azure Arc now, um, also operating systems of servers running outside of Azure. So to quickly show you that yeah. I'm making it very fast here. Uh, if I, I already deployed a policy, which basically goes out and checks for insecure password settings. So I said, hey, do this not just for my Azure VMs, do this as well for my um, servers outside of Azure. So what I want to do here is I would go to compliance view. And now you can see a couple of things. First of all, you can see that I do a horrible job when it comes to compliance. Uh, Dreadful. Sec <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, you can see here all the policies I have assigned. Um, and the one I just mentioned, for example, like to audit for insecure password settings, you can now see that uh, here, and you can see here what are actually the rules. So simple checks, like for example, you would also do using group policies with your Windows servers. For example, yeah. going out and checking like that the password, maximum password age um, and password length and, and so on, right? A, a set of rules, which we, by the way, have predefined or built in ones, but we also have a couple of them, which um, you can define by yourself. You can basically write your own rules as well, your own policies as well. But more interestingly, to actually look at the rules now is actually to see, okay, what resources are not non-compliant. And so if I click on this, you can now see here that I cannot just see my Azure virtual machines here, but also my servers running outside of Azure. And you can see that by the resource type here. So you have Microsoft.Compute virtual machines, which are Azure virtual machines. And then you have the Microsoft hybrid compute machines. These are servers running outside of Azure. And you can see here, um, both of like all my servers here actually are not compliant with these rules and you, I should actually go out and fix it. You're not a rule maker, you're a rule breaker. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel always so, so, uh, horrible when I look at my compliance state, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so, but it makes up for a good demo environment, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, definitely. Well, okay. So that's cool. Uh, right. We've talked about. Azure control plane, uh, we've talked about policies, um, but once you onboard a server in Azure using Azure Arc, like what can you, what else can you do with it? Yeah. Cause I've got yeah, it there no. I'm, and I'm, I'm pleased as punch. I've managed to get my hybrid server into my Azure Arc and I'm just like, it's non-compliant. Obviously, we're, hopefully we can fix the compliance, but what else can we do? <laughs> Yeah, no, this is actually an excellent question, to be honest. Um, so if wow. you want to manage, <laughs> I mean, I know you're always asking the right questions, right? <laughs> uh, 
Um, no, so if you if you want to onboard a Arc server or if you want to start managing specifically Arc servers, um, then where you go is like you would go into Azure Portal to Azure Arc, and this is where you basically get everything, like from the onboarding experience, from all the different uh, services in Azure Arc we are um, offering. It's not just about servers. It's also like, for example, Kubernetes clusters, SQL servers, Azure Stack HCI, uh, which we can onboard as existing resources, um, what we call the Azure Arc enabled infrastructure. But then we can also, for example, go out and deploy Azure services outside of Azure, which is also, by the way, pretty cool. But you asked about servers. So we're going to have a look at, at the servers here. And you can see here, these are my servers I actually already connected using Azure Arc. And the way I would connect the server like this is very simple. Um, we even have a wizard which helps you generate a little script to do that. But what it actually does, it downloads the agent, installs that agent, and then connects that agent to the right Azure subscription. So I have done that with a couple of servers here. And if I click on one, let's say this app 02, you can see here that it looks like an Azure resource, right? The reason for that is it became a native Azure resource, not in terms where it's running, but it has all the attributes of an Azure um, resource. So you can see here, it's basically part of an Azure subscription. Um, it's part of a resource group and so on. But you can also see here some additional local information. So you can see here that this one is already running Windows Server 2022, for example. Uh, you can see here in the bottom, I use tags to make sure where this server is running. Um, so this is my home, by the way. No worries, it's not no yours. <laughs> but. <laughs> But uh, you can see here, I can then actually use, take advantage of that to sort my resources. Another mm -hmm. big benefit now is that I can also use um, role-based access control. So what I can do is now I can use Azure Active Directory and say, hey, who can actually manage that server uh, from Azure using Azure Arc, right? So for example, if this server belongs to a SharePoint farm, for example, and I want the SharePoint team to be able to manage that, I can provide them permissions using Azure Active Directory, and then they can actually go out and manage that using Azure Arc. And everyone else who doesn't need to manage that server, I can just not allow them to see that server uh, to manage it. I can also cool. provide things like read only as well, right? And, and all the good stuff we have obviously in Azure. And that provides another benefit. We are now seeing customers taking away the local administrator rights from their big group of administrators and just managing their servers using Azure Arc. Because if you do now something here, like with all Azure resources, you also get an activity log. So you can then see what actually, who did actually do something to that resource. So that is also very interesting if you need to have a, um, an environment which where you can have audits and so on and see um, who did the change to a, to a server. And that, now, that will improve your compliance. So <laughs> It will improve your compliance. <laughs> it will improve my compliance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, speaking of compliance, I can obviously see here on the left side, I have one thing, policies. When I would click, I click on this, I can see now all the policies which are assigned to that specific server, right? You have seen I had a bunch of them, but now you only like, if I'm the server administrator, I would only see the policies which are really assigned to this specific server. And you can see here, this is again, the, like auditing the, the password settings and so on. And I would get that information. Now, I also have some other help here. Uh, okay. Really important, I have Azure Security Center onboarded, right? This allows me to use Azure Defender for servers, even though the VM is not running in Azure, and then I get also security recommendations for that specific servers, uh, for that specific server. So you can see here, there's a bunch of things I need to do. And if you're not familiar with Azure Security Center, it even gives me a priority state. Uh, what should I go out and do first? And so those are things I actually should go out and fix um, um, for, for that server. Super easy. It's like basically a one-click onboarding. Um, to Security Center, and then I already have that benefit without going through all like the rules and create them by myself. Really, Azure Security Center is there to make my my things even better. Cool, that is cool. Um, but there's there's more. There's more. Yeah, this is <laughs> there's even more. Um, so. I showed you like, for example, like the, the Windows Admin Center integration where I can do event log views and so on. Now, this would again mean that I actually need to go into that specific server. Um, 
and sometimes I just don't want to do that, right? I don't want to like go and remote into a server or use um, like something. Sometimes I have a server which I don't even have network connectivity directly through it. So what we have is log analytics. And log analytics really allows me to do queries of the logs on that system, right? So the, the, the logs are uploaded to a log analytics workspace. They're stored there at scale. And then you can do queries on this. Now, one thing I do usually like to do is, for example, let's go for security events. So I can see then it goes through all the log data of that specific server uh, in terms of security events, and I can see what's happening on that system. I can also do other things like performance monitoring. And you can see here, depending on what I enable, I can really um, get more and more out of that. Nice. Now, Cool. Now you would say performance log. I mean, it's great, but like now I need to build like my whole monitoring um, by myself. But of course, you can also use Azure Monitor. So if I click on Insights here, you can see here a couple of things I want to show you. First of all, obviously you get the base in performance information. So meaning that you see um, like disk space usage and so on. You see CPU utilization, available memory, disk IOs, disk throughput, latency, networking uh, throughput, and so on. And you can see here what's going on with that specific system. Um, but you can also set up, for example, alerts. Like let's say, okay, you only want to have like if you want to monitor the free disk space on a server, you can set up alerts and then you can get notified uh, using Azure Monitor as well. And obviously, you can also go like, I mean, you can now watch that per server, but you also have a central place with Azure Monitor uh, to, to centralize actually have a look at it. But what I find really cool is the dependency view. Now, sometimes you really want to figure out, okay, what is this server doing? Where is it connecting through? Um, who is connecting through to, to that server? So in this case, you can see here, I have my server here. Uh, you can see here the process is running, but I can also see the clients connecting to that specific application server. And then I can also see where is this server connecting to based on the different ports. So I can see here some ports are like um, web ports. Some of them are remote management ports. So if I look at, for example, port 443, I can see here that this server is connecting to these public endpoints. Um, it says like servers, but obviously it can also be like some sort of an API. So in this case, for example, you can even see if I zoom in here a little bit more, you can see here that this one connects to the Arc um, uh, API, which is obvious because we installed the Arc agent on that machine and it connects to the Arc API. So that shows up here in our monitoring tool as well. Cool. That is, that is, that is cool. Um, <laughs> but you know and it, there's always treasure if there's a map there's treasure and i think you've just uh, shown us a little bit of treasure um so now i know that customers that are onboarding all of these management tools they're probably thinking there's a bit of work to do right because yep. like all, all of this stuff that thomas is just showing me looks great but it looks like quite hard work right so I'm, I'm, so, I'm guessing you're going to tell me it's not, but like, but why is it not? Well, so first of all, it looks, it looks it, complicated to me. It looks complicated to me. So, so, so first of all, we, we the, the onboarding of this this stuff, uh, I have to be honest, it's not that hard, right? I can onboard this um, uh, and 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 like the monitoring pieces, the security center, um, even update management and so on, super easily. Um, however. Um, there are some like best practices I probably should take care of. And I still should also be aware that like, hey, what happens if someone changes the setting and it doesn't work anymore? What happens then, right? And a lot of people are now, why would I even like, why would I even be responsible for patching my service? Why would I need to be the responsible person for look for making sure that my server is backed up? Or uh, this is like really becoming a commodity, right? At the end, you're running servers, not because you want to run servers. Um, well. I do sometimes, well, do. but <laughs> but uh, in many cases, in, in basically all cases, you'd run servers because you want to run an application or a service on top of that. And the server is just there to pro as, as a server, right? <laughs> what the name says. Um, and so what we have to make this easy, Azure can take those management um, activities away from the admins if they need to. And right, and, and no worries, like if someone now thinks, okay, well, that's my job and it's now gone, 
trust me, there is a lot of other stuff uh, which you can still do and you have to do. And uh, we are in a very good position. So what I want to show you here, I'm quickly going back to the Azure portal, is a service called Azure Auto Manage. And that is where Azure actually provides a management experience and does manage your servers. So for example, if I go here to Azure Auto Manage, um, you will see that I already have two servers onboarded here. Uh, one is running in Azure, it's an Azure virtual machine. The other one is a Arc enabled server. And you can see here, they already configured, they're already ready, um, and they're taking advantage of the Azure best practices. Now I wanna quickly mention, what are the Azure best practices? So if you're dealing with Azure, you probably came across the Azure Cloud Adoption Framework. Um, this basically gives you like the best practices uh, and guidance uh, when it comes to Azure. And this is developed by the product groups, by our customers, by our field staff, and bring all that knowledge together. And um, we, we basically put that in the Cloud Adoption Framework. Now you can read about like how to configure monitoring, how to set the, all these things up, um, but why not just have a service like Azure Auto Manage do that for you? So what I wanna show you here is how easy it is and how fast it is to actually onboard a server to uh, Azure Auto Manage. So I basically just click on Enable Auto Manage. I select the servers I want to uh, manage by Azure Auto Manage. And you can see here again, it's not just my um, Azure VMs, it's also my on-premises server, which I can configure. Yeah. But let's for, for now yeah. take an Azure VM. Uh, and then I can choose between if this is a dev machine or a test machine or a production machine, right? In some cases, you have machines which they're not really important to like production environment, but they should still be able to be managed. They still need to be secured. They still need to be like monitored and stuff like that. But you don't necessarily, for example, need a backup or something like that. So you can choose between that. And if you want to see all the services which are onboarded, so if you click on compare, you can see here, these are this is the huge list of services we are onboarding uh, to a production machine. Uh, think about like monitoring, backup, security center, update management, change tracking, guest configuration, uh, <laughs> automation, log analytics, boot diagnostic, you name it, right? A ton of services. And if you then look at tests, you can see here that some of them drop out because they're probably um, not worth doing for a test environment. But again, you can choose if it still needs to be done. You can still also select production as well. Uh, in my case, I will go for production. And then what I can choose here is the configuration best practices we just talked about. So I can select the Azure best practices or I can create my own preferences. So if I wanna know what I'm actually can configure. So this is for example, like the backup frequency I can configure um, and the anti-malware configuration. But if I wanna do other times, I can again, create my own preferences. And then I just hit enable and that's it. It will then take a while, uh, runs a couple of minutes. Uh, will deploy these configurations and these management services to the to the server, and from there on, you don't have to take care of that server in, in that sense anymore. Azure will do that for you. Wow, that is cool, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and, it, and it's actually pretty simple. Um, so, if someone wants to be as cool as you, um, and they wanted to find out this stuff, where can they go find out more, Thomas? So we definitely have a couple of links in the documentation, which I recommend going through, especially for Windows Server 2022, for Azure Arc, for Windows Admin Center, as well as for Azure Auto Manage. There you can find basically all the information. I also highly recommend to have a look at the Cloud Adoption Framework, uh, where we have all more info stuff uh, about these different hybrid technologies. And we have a special guide there, especially for customers who work in hybrid environments. Wow. So that was the science part. I feel like that's me just pumping my hair like I'm hitting off the advert on the study. Um, but let's do the fun part um, because um, I know you're normally all about compliance, but now we're going to talk about fun. <laughs> so um, we're going to do our server meme review. Um, as always, the producers, this is a total surprise. I've not seen this. Um, they love to show humorous and funny memes and generally speaking, embarrass me. Um, so we've got a couple. We've got uh, we've got two memes today. 
and um, we're gonna obviously if you if you have a meme, send us the meme. If you have comments uh, or ratings on the memes, even uh, let us know if it's a good one or a bad one. Please do tell. Uh, so um, let's do the first showcase uh, for meme one. Uh, let's have a look and let's discuss it. Whoa. Okay. So uh, so not not sure if this is a server room. I don't think that is a server. That's just like a wall of networking. <laughs> or if it's someone having a spaghetti festival. That's not that's not real. That's not real, is it? I I have no idea. If it, I, I mean, I've seen many, many of such pictures. And I'm always... I I, can, I believe it. It could be real. It could be real. It's just... You think that could be real? If, if it is real, I don't want to work there. I, I hope. And you... Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I hope I hope it's not, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, sh like surely um, the 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 azure arc element of this would mean that they didn't have to have all those cables. I mean, they've got enough cables there to go around the moon. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I especially <laughs> like. It's great that they have all the same color. I mean, I, I yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure if different <laughs> colors would make it even better, but. Um, no. Yeah, that's tough. That's that's a rough. No, that's, a, that's spaghetti junction, and um, and obviously fry as well. Uh, right. Okay. So, right. Mean two. Here we go. I'm ready for this one. But there, there are no bugs in the Azure cloud. There are no bugs. There are no bugs. No. I haven't heard of any. No, of course. Like, <laughs> where... <laughs> of course you're going to say that. Of course you're going to say that. Like, I haven't like... heard of any. Yeah, no, um, no, but no, uh, but this is putting you on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no way. No, um, I, I mean, it's wherever, wherever you have software, right? Uh, there are obviously bugs. Uh, there's no question. But that's also where we have this, for example, this bug bounty programs where people who find bugs get actually paid um, if they, depending on how big, if there's a security bug or whatever. Um, and obviously, uh, we try to like work on that. So, uh, um, so but. So we're hunting There's... bugs, like like star like in Starship Troopers. Oh, definitely. Um, There's a bug. Definitely. There's a bug bounty. <laughs> yep. There is like so if you are like some someone who works in IT security and you find uh, a bug like a security bug in Azure, um, you obviously report that to us. There is an official website where you can make that report, and then you can actually go and. Um, even get a reward for this because we're happy that people telling us obviously about these bugs so we can actually fix it. Um, so that that is something something great we are doing. So there are no there are no bugs in the Azure cloud because we've caught them all and paid out on them. So, because we have yeah, so yeah. many great people looking out for bugs. Oh, <laughs> that's, that 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 is what it is. That is what it is. <laughs> so look, I love it. If you've got memes, if you want us to talk a meme, if you want to show an expert like Thomas a meme, and then he can tell you how to make money out of bugs. Who knew you can make money out of bugs? Um, we'll find out that official website address as well, and we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the information as well on our recap. Um, because you know what I'm, I mean? That if you can make money, if you can get free money from Microsoft, then 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 do it, right? Um, so let's just have a quick recap. Um, and these are kind of just my, my sort of takeaways. Um, and here we go. So um, hybrid is the is going to be the end state. I think that that you know it's not it's not something that's passing through. It's not the it's not on premise hybrid cloud. It's on premise and cloud, which is hybrid, and they're going to work together. And there's always going to be some versions of that for probably as long as I live. As long as you for live. for for many of our customers, I'm not saying for all, right? Yeah. If you were today build yeah. a startup, uh, depending on which yeah. in which industry. It's a different yeah. story, but um, yes, I think for many of, of our customers, it will be hybrid will be an end state. Cool. And then the other one, the other the, the other little note that I made was um, about role based conditional access and the use of policies. And actually, th that that I just thought was so smart because what it means is is that you can actually cleverly disseminate the right people to the right place on your your whole estate and you can control that and then you can improve compliance um which is which is something you need to do so which is and which is very important to me obviously uh in, in general yeah. um no but yeah and you i think this is a fantastic point it it's like 
when we talk about the single control plane, obviously the great stuff is like the, like a lot of people think about is the management tools. Like how can I do update management monitoring? That's all the good, that's all good stuff. But what a control plane also adds on value is for example, to have that identity part, right? To have the role-based access part uh, where yeah. you actually can say, hey, I have a single place where all my identity and permissions get managed, which is audible, auditable. <laughs> and uh, where you can see all that and actually uh, improve your compliance as well. So I think that is a very important part um, which you just brought up. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you so, so much, Thomas, for joining us today. Um, look, really appreciate it. Um, as always, I've learned a ton. Um, mind officially blown as, as requested at the start of the episode, so thank you. Um, thank you all for listening and joining and um, you know, I know like half an hour is a long time and hopefully you find it useful and you learn something. So um, this episode from the Rock the Cloud um, is done, uh, but keep your eye out right here um, on Channel 9, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube for the next episode. And remember, please do let us know if you've got any thoughts, if there's anything you want to see or hear or you you know want to talk to, you know, like, you know, I really didn't like that Thomas Moira guy, like, you know, I don't want to see him anymore. Like, just let us know. Do you know what I mean? Just let us know. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get somebody else. No, 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 I'm joking. Of course, we could. We can't replace Thomas um, because nobody, nobody knows as much as he knows. So um, I think I think you're stuck with us, uh, unfortunately. But you know, we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, so thank you very much for me, Tom. And yep, thank you very much for me too. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here today and to talk to you. Uh, it's always a lot of fun, and um, <laughs> I always get challenged by interesting questions. So I love that, and yeah. I hope you to see. You in another one. Yeah, no, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.